We're going to go first, first, amen, to the uh, proverb. We're going to take up part two of this message, amen, proverb. going to go to Proverbs 17, 22, and then the, uh, we're going to finalize this series also from Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25 through 28. We're going to start off with Proverbs 17, 22, and then we're going to do Proverbs 12, 25 through 28. Amen. But first we're going to, amen, look at Proverbs 17, 22 first. Amen. All right. Let's look at it. Let's stand and read. Let's stand to honor the word, not me, but the word, the word. Everybody have your Bible? Say Amen. Amen. Hey, everybody have your scripture? Say amen. Amen. We wait on you if you don't have it, but we want you to know that every time we come in to give God the glory and give the message that you will stand united with me with the word of God, with the Bible in front of you, that you will know what God is saying to you, not just rooked, but the word of God. And it says, Proverbs uh, 1722 it says a merry heart doeth good like a medicine but a broken spirit drive the bone alright let's look at Proverbs 1225 it says heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduces them. A slowful man roasts not that which he took in hunting, but the substance a diligent man is precious. In the way of righteousness is life, and in the pathway, therefore, there is no death. I use for the subject, take up where we left off in our last series, keep a good attitude. Amen. Wave at your neighbor and say, keep a good attitude. Now, to someone on the other side, say, keep. A good attitude. I want this to sink in. I want this to sink in. And you that are live streaming with us today, we want you to receive the word into your heart because you're going to need it as we make this journey for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Everybody can stand a tune-up when it comes to attitude. I say everybody can stand a tune-up when it comes to attitude. We're not so saved that our attitude cannot change. I say we are not so saved that our attitude cannot change. Hallelujah. Attitude is a subtle way of thinking, I'm, I'm revamping all over again. A attitude is a subtle way of thinking, of feeling about something. What controls our attitude? The Spirit of God, Him living on the inside, gives us power to help control our attitude. Amen. We all want to keep a good attitude. But it takes God to perfect our spiritual attitude. We are like sitting on the hill that men we cannot be hid. We ask you to think about today that many of you, I want to ask the question, you don't have to raise your hand how many took this message in from last Sunday and you applied it to your life and you, it got you through this week? Because you 
made a choice and a decision to keep a good attitude. Oh no, things didn't go right. But you, in the midst of it all, you made a decision that I'm going to keep my good attitude. Hallelujah. Things are going around in the world after what is taking place in the world, all the buzz that's taking place in the world. We as people of God have to have a good spiritual attitude. I'm here to tell somebody today, just let's take charge of your life by how you respond. Hallelujah. Even in difficult circumstances, you got to know how to have a spiritual response. I heard somebody preach a few Sundays ago, how will you respond? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ella Miller spoke to us on that message. So how will you respond when things don't go right? How will you respond? I will re take charge and respond with a good attitude. Now there's two types of attitude. Positive attitude and negative attitude. Sometimes the enemy want to draw you into a negative attitude. That's why... Apostle Paul said, I saw another mind warned against the law of my mind. When I attempt to do the good, evil was always present. And I want to say, saints of God, we are in warfare. But if you have on the whole armor of Jesus Christ, you can be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Hallelujah. So as we see here, attitude is gratitude. It determines how high you go in life. It determines your outlook. It determines your future. How you respond. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you, you that listen to me, I don't know where you are in your life, but pick yourself up with a good attitude. You are who you are because death and life is in the power of the tongue. Approach it with a good attitude. Even if you're sick, even if you're going through, with a good attitude, say, he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity, and with his strife, I'm going to be healed. You got to say it and believe it. You can't say one thing and do another. Can I get a witness? It's time to pick yourself up for the sake of Jesus Christ with a good attitude, a good demeanor. Now, in this passage of scripture, can I preach to you today? Hallelujah. Sometimes we got to slow it down because sometimes people want to shout right quick and ain't got enough word to last during the week. Hallelujah. And, and the Lord told me, he said, you got to put a muzzle on the people because they ain't getting enough word. He said, they want you to move, but you got to give him a, them a word in this time and season. Because if they don't get it, they can't make it. Hallelujah. Now look at, look at uh, Proverbs 17, 22. Work with me. It said, a merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dry the bone. So when you have a happy heart, it's not, it's not saying the, the physical heart, but the heart of the mind. If you have the heart in, in, of the mind in place, the, the physical heart will do what it needs to do to keep you alive. So it says a cheerful heart doth good like a medicine. I want to ask the question, how many out there have taken your medicine today? Medicine is a part of treatment. When something going wrong, we take medicine. But the greatest medicine is to have a cheerful heart. 
I said the best medicine is to have a cheerful heart. And if you have a cheerful heart, it heals the whole body. Your whole body can be healed. But if you have a other place, a, 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 a heart that is broken, by the way, he said he healed the broken heart and he binds up every room. Every one of us, we have been saved, but there are times we had went through a broken heart. Oh, yes, we have. Somebody going through a broken heart right now. But I'm going to encourage you to give you some medicine today to let you know a merry heart does good like a medicine. I don't know about you, but I take my medicine every day. You got, to, you got to discipline yourself to feed your mind and to feed your heart with the word of God in order to have a happy heart. If you don't get enough word, you can't have a happy heart. The enemy and the world want to pull you in until on their way of thinking. But when you have a happy heart, you can rejoice. You can, you can go through life and your future will be brighter when you have a happy heart. Let the church say amen. Somebody getting ready to have a brighter future. Somebody getting ready to have a brighter destiny. Can I get a witness? He said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of good and not of evil to give you an expected end. Are y'all expecting God to do what he needs to do? I want to ask the question, are you expecting God to do what he needs to do? Can I get a witness? So he said, merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit, it works on the physical body. When your spirit is broken. Some can't eat. Some can't sleep. Some go through various aspects of life. Can I get a witness? But I want you to know that God got enough medicine in the hem of his garment to heal a sin sick soul. When you got medicine in your mind and in your spirit, which is the word of God, you can live. Hallelujah. I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. How many people in here knowing that you are getting ready to live for God? Tell your neighbors, I'm, I'm getting ready to live. Hallelujah. When your spirit is broken, sometimes people show it on the outside. They don't fix up. They feel they down and but God has put us in place to help one another. Hallelujah. All right, let's go to the next passage of scripture. Hallelujah. Proverbs 12, 25. It says, heaven is in the heart of a man. Make it stoop. But a good word maketh it glad. Okay? There are a lot of people going through anxieties right now. They're going through fears. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. A heaviness, the anxieties of life. In other words, weigh the heart down. That's why the word said, let us lay aside every way and the sin that so easily beset us. Let us run this race with patience, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. There's things that God wants you to just lay it aside because it's weighing you down. It's keeping you from progressing. 
it keeping you from going forward. But you got to make up in your mind, you're not going to let that or this weigh you down. You got to make up in your mind, you got not going to let this take away your joy. You got to make up in your mind that you're not going to let this take away your peace. You got to make up in your mind, you got to be not going to let nothing take away your love for Jesus Christ. And Apostle, and, and Apostle Paul said, I let nothing separate me from the love of Jesus Christ. Nor distress, nor persecution, nor famine. Hallelujah. All these things. And then he finalized it and said, I am, we are more than conquerors. Through him. That love, you can't conquer anything without Jesus. You can't conquer anything without the word in your life. Heaviness. You can't let people, what they say about you, take away your spirit. People going to be talking until Jesus comes. They going to be criticizing you until Jesus comes. They're going to try to intimidate you until Jesus comes. But you got to make up in your mind that you're going to have and maintain a good attitude. Somebody in here today is letting things weigh you down. You better get rid of it. It's trying to drain you. It's trying to take away your energy. That's why some of you got low energy. You're looking at the thing that you're facing instead of looking at Jesus, who is the author and finisher. Am I preaching in here? And finisher of our faith. You got to keep your focus. Hallelujah. Got to keep your focus on Jesus and lay aside all that weight. That you're trying to carry. Hallelujah. Come in and you can't get a praise out. You come in and you got that weight still on your shoulder. But I heard somebody say, take it, pack it under your feet. Hallelujah. I know you're trying to push me, but I can't go there right now. Because I got to give greater Bible away some teaching. If we're going to be the first church, we got to act like we are the first church. We represent God. We are here by example to others. How can we testify to others when we need to have a good attitude? Let your countenance be like a good attitude. Don't look like you've been eating lemons. Don't act like things are sour. People ask you, how you doing? Well, I guess I'll make it. You ought to respond, say, I'm blessed and highly favored. Even under pressure, you still say, I'm blessed and highly favored. It's how you respond with a good attitude. It makes the heart stoop. Hallelujah. Many kind, all kinds of diseases will creep in if we don't have a good attitude. Anxieties. Now, we got a job to do. And our job to do is to help those that are carrying burdens. You can be feeling good, but God wants you to speak good words to help somebody else. Hallelujah. All right, encouraging others. 
life-giving words. Words going to bring life. Hallelujah. How many people that you met this week and you gave them life-giving words? Hallelujah. You get the word, but you need to give life to somebody else. Oh, I'm a... We need to give joy to somebody else. We need to help somebody else to give, get peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then it said, the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. But the way of the wicked seduces them. Okay, the righteous person is cautious with his respect to his neighbor. And that's the key word right there. We have to respect one another. Tell your neighbor, say, respect one another. You got to exemplify respect before you get respect. If you don't exemplify respect, nobody will give you respect. Birds of a feather flock together. Listen, I can't make you give me respect. I got to deserve your respect. Hallelujah. Where I am, it don't make me big. It don't make me bigger than you. I'm still sitting at the feet of Jesus wherever Jesus carry me. I ain't got time to be the big shot. I done come too far. 54 years of preaching and I'm going to change now? I said no to the devil. I'm not going to change. I'm not going to change being rooked. Oh, he got this, he got that. Oh, watch me stay under the feet of Jesus. Watch me. Watch me. One thing that God hates is a proud look. He hates it. I ain't got time to be proud. My focus is on Jesus and feeding souls of the household of faith. How can they hear without a preacher? How can they preach except they be sent? I know I'm sent. Bishop Randolph Jackson started this ministry and I know I was sent to be his assistant pastor and now I'm where God has placed me. I know I'm sent to help others. To help other children of God get on their feet. To help heal People in the organization as well as Greater Bible Way Miracle Temple. We got some people right here that still need to be healed. You sitting like you got all Jesus, but you need some healing. You sitting like you don't need nothing, but you, in your spirit, you need some healing. And I would believe that somebody get behind that closed door and y'all, you can't help but say, Lord have mercy on me. I need you, Jesus. I need your healing. I need you to give me direction. I can't make it without you. Somebody sang a song, take your burden to the Lord and leave him there. If you trust and never doubt, he'll surely bring you out.
take your burden to the Lord and leave them there. You can't take all of your burdens to everybody because everybody don't share in your suffering. But he said, let us come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy to find grace and help in time of need. When you don't help, get help from somebody else, God will give you the help that you need. Don't hide. Don't have a pity party on yourself. Get up and fix yourself up and say, I'm lifting up my head. Oh, ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting door, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Hallelujah. Now, the, the, word, the word paints a picture here. He said, the lifestyle of the wicked leads them astray. So, 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 how many of you glad that you're saved? You're not perfect, but you're saved. You're not where you want to be, but you're saved. You got a, a few little uh, flaws. But guess what? You're still saved. Everybody don't understand your flaws. And don't expect everybody to understand your flaws. Only if God understands, that's what counts. Now, let me tell you something. Now, don't, not everybody understands you. Not everybody understands you. They think they understand you, but they have not spent enough time to know you. Come on. They spent enough time to know you. Once you perform and have that knowingness about that person, you will understand them a little bit more. Listen, I've been married to uh, First Lady Rooker for 50 years. She discovered things about me that she never discovered. But guess what? They're all good now. I had to, I had to block that out right there. So, 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 in, in order to stand, understand your brother and sister, you got to become acquainted with them. You got to become acquainted. If they have a bad attitude, you don't have to question why they're acting like that. You got to know how to lift them up. That's what some people are doing now. They're finding fault. You ought to take the mold out of your eye. You trying to take a moat out of everybody else's eye and you got a beam in your eye. You better stop it. You trying to judge somebody. You trying to judge them, try to tell them how they ought to be acting. I want to turn the question around. How are you acting? Some of you will say, I didn't know that was in our pastor. But my, my aim is to preach the word and get the word in you. Because you're going to be tested. You're going to be tried every day. Family members, jobs, children. Tattlers. You got some people just tell everything. And if they don't tell the right thing, it'll affect your attitude. You 
got to stop going by what people say until you hear it from the horse's mouth. Thank you, cheerleaders. I'm trying to get somebody to sit in the front seat. You've been sitting in the back seat long enough. But I'm trying to get you to sit in the front seat so God, so you can see in front of you of where you desire to go in your future. All right? It says, a slowful man roasted not that which he took hunting, but the substance of a diligent man is precious. This is saying a lazy person. A lazy person does not roast what he has hunted. He expects somebody else to cook it. Oh God, are y'all with me today? He, he don't have no desire to feed himself. But he wanted to be waited on. It's good that people wait on you, but you got to do something for yourself. Diligency, immortal possession. I'm telling y'all, I ain't going to be lazy for God. I'm going to work while it's day. When night come, no man can work. Come on, wave at your neighbor in the back. You don't have to get up and say, keep on working, keep on working. In the way of righteousness is life. In the way of righteousness is life. And in the pathway thereof, there is no death. In the pathway of righteousness. Right standards. Standing with God. The path of the righteousness. There is life. In that lifestyle, there is no death. For the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. It's right to walk a righteous life. I heard the word of God said, follow peace with all men. Holiness without, no man shall see the Lord. The time has come that God is coming back. But we got to walk this road with a righteous attitude. Can I get a witness? Because if you get angry and you, it's Bible said, get angry and sin not. But if you get angry, get it off your chest. Get it out of your spirit. Because you need life every step of the way. I stop by to tell you, it's pick me up time. It's time to pick yourself up. It's time we are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are cast down, but not destroyed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Yeah, there are times that we're going to be persecuted, but God, he wants you to take it anyhow. Jesus was persecuted. The Bible said we're going to be persecuted for his namesake. Pray for them that despite for you and persecute you for the namesake. Everybody got to know within yourself uh, 
when persecution come, you got to stay on, stay with the word of God and maintain with a perfect attitude. Can I get a witness? Because I heard the word of God say weeping may endure for a night. I got 10 minutes, I'm gonna be finished. For, yeah, weeping may endure for a night. But joy, oh joy, come in the morning. You got to make up in your mind. After all that you've been through, you're going to still have your joy. Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah, yeah. The joy of the Lord. How many this day still have joy? Can I get a witness? How many went through your week? After all you've been through, you still have joy. Some of you had loved ones to go to the hospital. Some of you went through difficult times, but in the midst of it all, you still have joy. You still have peace. Yeah, the peace of God that passes all understanding. Is anybody here can attest to the fact I still have my peace. I still have my peace in the midst of a storm. I know you're going through a storm and it get rocky, but I heard, yeah, I seen the lightning flash, I heard the thunder roll, I seen breakers dashing, I can conquer my soul. Can I preach, Elder? Can I preach, Elder Rooker? Yeah! Is anybody here know the times things try to conquer you? Things try to get you under. But I heard somebody say don't wait till the battle is over. Shout now. Yeah, oh, 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 oh. yeah, do you still have your praise? Do you still have your joy? After all that you've been through, I got joy, unspeakable joy, and full of glory. Yes, I do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I still have joy. Yeah. You're going to be tested. But I heard Brother James say the trials of your faith worketh patiently. Stay in there. Stay patiently. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He will strengthen that heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. Y'all keep pushing me. Yeah. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. Do I have some people here? Is getting ready to mount up. Mount up with wings as an eagle. They shall run, not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. You can't give up now. The race is not given to the swift. Can I preach first lady? Neither to the song, but to him, to him, 
to him, I said to him, that endureth until the end. Yeah, stay in the race. Stay there until Jesus come. Because one day he's going to crack the sky and say, come my people. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We're going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Have all in your vessel lambs trembling burning be ready be ready be ready when the bride will come yeah be ready keep looking unto the hill from with coming your help your help come from the Lord keep looking yeah look with confidence look with confidence in Jesus look with confidence in the word of God because God gonna give you a crown yeah don't throw away your confidence hold on to the word hold on to the Holy Ghost hold on to the joy hold on to the patience hold on in the long suffering yeah 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 Yeah, Ezekiel saw him as a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Job saw him as a horse part in the valley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In your valley, God is there. In your valley, God will pick you up. In your valley, God will see you through. In your valley, God will bless you. In your valley, God will heal you. In your valley, God will pick you up. In your valley, God will give you joy. In your valley, God will give you peace. In your valley, God will. Oh, yeah. Yes, he will. Yeah. Give him praise in this house. Give him praise in this house. Yeah, 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 I feel the power in here. I feel a moving in here. Oh, oh, oh. I feel the praise. I feel the praise. I feel the praise in this place. Listen. Listen, y'all put a praise on this knowing that you're coming back stronger. Put a praise on it knowing that you're coming.